Now in this lesson, things are going to get a bit hairy. Um, the reason why is it, it's because I'm going to write probably the world's worst algorithm, which is going to have real hardcore C++ programmers uh, wanting to take me out and shoot me. But I'm going to do it anyway, because, uh, you know, you'll be learning C++ yourself properly later. And looking on the internet and so on for all bits and pieces. I'm going to let you learn about C++, all the little bits and pieces and all the, all the kind of thing later. I'm just going to show you as much as I can to help you understand what's going on. Okay, writing a new program. Now this is Learn Finance C++, so I need to do a bit more financial stuff. So let's do some financial type stuff with uh, sorting out people's salaries, for instance. It's just a, for want of a better example. First thing I'm going to do before I sort out people's salaries is I'm going to create a new structure called name and salary. This idea we're going to have two fairly simple things. We're going to have a name and we're going to have a salary. Okay, so structure, inside the structure we have a name and a salary. Now later on I'm going to create a randomised um, set of, uh, randomised array of names and salaries. And then I'm going to sort them by salary. I mean, this could be the order I call them into the office to chat to them about things. Or it could be just printing out the number of shares that somebody has, or whatever it is. Anyway, it's vaguely financial, so that, that's good enough for me. Now, let's get down to the main program. Now I've set up my structure, I can create my array. So name and sal. I'm going to call this the fab, this array fab4. It's got, this is an array called fab with four elements in it. And the first two-part element is John and he can earn $79,000. Then we shall have Paul. We probably figured out where this is going by now. And he can earn the most. He can earn $129,000. Then we'll go for George. Oh, wrong thing. How much can he earn? $99,000, why not? And finally, of course, we'll have Ringo. And Ringo can earn $89,000. Okay, so we've got the array set up, which is a structure, two-part structure. Now, we're going to do some processing later, but let's just uh, print out a little message. Super. Now, before we do anything, let, let's print out this um, this thing. Now, of course, we're going to send off the name of the array, which remember is a, from the previous lesson is a pointer in disguise. We'll send off the size of the array as well. Just well, you can work out the size of arrays later, but that's beyond the scope of this lesson. And let's create a print out function. So. Let's do that at the top of the program. Oh, what's going on here? So let's, it's not going to return anything, it's just going to print out this, um, this array. Remember, the, the array name is going to come in and be a pointer. It's just call it pin pointer input it's of type this is of that so again that will tell C++ exactly how many bytes this has to move every time we add one onto it so it knows what to do and then we'll have the size of the array 
Lovely. I think we're cooking on gas now. Okay, so we'll do our usual four trick. Four int i. This time we are going to use i actually to go around the pointer. We're not going to add one onto the pointer. We're going to use a different kind of notation just to show you the kinds of things you can do. Again, C++ purists will probably want to take me out and shoot me, but I'm just trying to show you as much as I can within the scope of what we've already covered. So let's print out then. Now, this is going to get a bit hairy, so you're just going to have to kind of trust me here, but I could, in theory, I suppose, print this. And then the following, I'll need to put a little space in there, don't I? So, just so we're happy. Um, and then print the other one out, which is the second element, which is p in plus i dot salary. And then a new line. Now, unfortunately, that's not really going to work, getting error messages. Why not? Because there's too much... Uh, there's too much ambiguous ambi ambiguity here. The first thing I need to do is I need to... So what we're saying there is take the pointer address that's coming, which is the beginning of the array, add a number onto it, which in the first instance will be zero, which will take us exactly that many bytes away, because it's zero, no bytes. Then have a look at the value of that thing, and then print the name element from the structure. And this is, it won't run, won't compile. We need to disambiguate, disambiguate all of this. First thing I need to do is I need to put some brackets around there. So now we're not saying give me the value of the, of the pointer plus i. I'm saying pointer plus i. So go to the first address, then add on however many bytes. I mean, it's only zero, but... We know exactly how many bytes that could be 16 bytes, 50 bytes, I don't know. And then give me the value of that thing, and then give me the name. Because that should give us this, and then that should give us this. But again, it's not enough. It's not enough disambiguation. I have to disambiguate even further by putting even more brackets around so that that dot knows what's going on. Otherwise, that dot is going to get really confused with this. So you just have to trust me here. You have to put the brackets in to disambiguate everything. So now C++ knows what's going on. So remember, the pointer is the address of the first element in the array. Now, we're going to add ion, and in this case that's going to be zero the first time around, to give us this. We're then going to get the value of the thing there, which is something a bit shaped like that. And then this dot name says go into that thing and then get me out the name. But we need the brackets to avoid any ambiguity. And the same for the other side. Now this isn't really going to be a very helpful message at the moment, but let's just, uh, let's just print that out. Build succeeded. And we get John, 79,000, Paul, 129,000. Now we want to sort this on salary. So we can see Paul should be first, then George, then Ringo, and then the selfless John who wants for no worldly possessions except the entire floor of a building and lots of Rolls Royces. So hopefully that all makes sense. We want to sort this thing on the salary. And then we want to rearrange the array on the name there. So we can go ahead and do that now. Now we'll have a second printout at the end for after we've done some sorting. Obviously I haven't actually done anything at the moment. Let's not worry too much about that. So print this should print out the same amount twice. So before processing, now the next time around we want that to be the first line that to be the second line, that to be the third line, that to be the fourth line. Hopefully that's hopefully you're with me so far. 
So what we need to do then is we now need to sort out this um, array. So let's do that. So let's same thing again. Uh, it's going to be the same inputs, the name of the array, which is really a pointer in disguise, and then the size of the array. Obviously, of course, we don't have this uh, thing yet. So let's actually, it's going to be the same. Let's just copy that. No, it's going to be the same structure as this one here. So let's just change the names to protect the innocent. Oop. Get that name. Lovely, it's got rid of all my errors. <laughs> Obviously it doesn't do anything at the moment, but let's not worry too much. Now I'm about to write um, the world's most horrible, the world's most horrible algorithm. And I do apologize in advance for anyone who knows how to write proper algorithms. I just put this together this evening, just to kind of show you what's going on. I'll change the name here, just so we can have a slightly different name from that again. Pointer to name and salary array structure type thing. Now I'm going to introduce a new type. Um, it's called a bool or a boolean type. Now this can hold one of two values, true or false. And I'm going to run a bubble sort. Now I'm not going to explain bubble sorts too much here, but anyone who's used them before will know that uh, you basically go through an array of things and then you swap two things if they're the wrong way around and then you keep swapping and keep swapping and keep swapping and then you go to the back to the front of the array and then you do it again and again and again and again until no pairs need swapping. It's not the most elegant or quick sorting algorithm in the universe, but it does the trick. So let's give it a go. Oh yeah, let's just come back to this printout one here. Again, next time this goes to one, and this is going to be the pointer address plus one. And because I know that I'm a name and sal pointer, I know exactly how many bytes, uh, bytes that is to go. And then give me the value of that. And then give me the name element of that structure that I've received. Anyway, I'm going to do something very similar here. So equals true. It can either be true or false, which is handy. Now, there's lots of different ways of doing a bubble sort. I'm going to do... Andy's very clumsy way. You can, for homework, you can write a better one. Um, so we'll set this to true so that we go into the while loop. Immediately at the top here, we'll set swap again to false. And uh, if we go through this process I'm about to do and we find nothing needs swapping round, then this will stay false and then this while loop will drop out and then we'll be able to return. to the main program. I just want to stick that in there as well, just for fun. But if we do swap a pair, then we'll reset it back to true again and run the while loop one more time. Okay, here's where we get a bit hairy because we're going to do another for loop. It's going to be very similar to the previous one. However, a couple of little things here. I'm not going to set this to size of array. Which you might have been expecting. Uh, why not? Because I've got four things. Now, I'm going to be comparing... I should just comment this out so it doesn't get all hairy. I'm not going to be looking at that, and then looking at that, and then looking at that, and then looking at that. I'm going to be looking at that and then that, and then that. So I only ever get to that one there for the last operation. Think of that again. I look at that and swap them around if one's bigger than the other. Then that, then that. Three operations, not one, two, three, four operations. So I'm going to take one off here because I'm never going to go beyond that pair. I mean, if I was to compare that and something following it, 
some rubbish in memory, which is horrible. I'm going to give myself all sorts of problems. Anyway, that's why we have minus one. We're not going from um, zero to three. We're going from zero to two. Zero, one, two. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So put the old thingy in. Braces, pair of braces. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we've got this array. Let's just bring this thing up a little bit. Stick it here. And comment it out. Actually, let's bring it up the slide a bit. Okay, what we're going to say is this. We're going to say if, uh, using the construct that we used in the um, the print routine, if this thing here, I'll, let me use spaces, it might help. If p, if the th if the value of the thing, which is at position p nas plus i, which in the first case will be zero. How many brackets have I got here? One, two. Dot salary is less than, if 79,000 is less than 129,000, plus i, again, the zeroth one. But again, what we're going to do there is we'll, we'll, have, we'll be saying a, b, c, d. Is the salary at a less than the salary at a? Well, that's no good, is it? Zero. So we need to add one on. Another one on. Ah, brilliant. So i at zero gives us that one. I gives us that one. And then zero plus one will give us that one. So a and b, b and c, c and d. So when i gets to 2, which is the maximum we can go to, we start there. So pointer plus 2 of these name and sal things. And then pointer plus 2 of these name and sal things plus 1. Ah, there we go. So if that first salary is less than that second salary, then swap them round. We need to swap. We need to run through this while loop one more time. We're going to swap these things. Swap equals true. And let's swap them around. First thing I need, I, I need a temporary holding value. Um, we, could, we could actually stick this at the top of the... Uh, we can actually stick this at the top of the program. Yeah. Actually, this probably makes sense if we stick it there. Um, purists might object, they might say you should do it here, but let's not worry too much. Temp equals what? Well, it equals the, th the value of the thing, which is at position P NAS plus I. So, if we come in and the, the thing at eight salary is is less than the th oh, if that salary is less than this salary, then set this temporary variable the value of the thing which is at the point of plus zero, which would be the a value in this case. Um. Just the whole thing. Remember, this temp is and actually probably it will make it easy to read the program if I if I put that down here. So this structure called temp, which is expecting a name and a salary, is set to the value of the thing at a. Let's uh, let's say. Now we're going to set the value of b. 
equal to the thing that's at A. So the second position here will get set to John and 79,000. Remember, we're holding this in temp, which is what we just did there. So let's uh, let's do that now. So we're going to say at position one now, the A position, the first time around, plus I. Set that equal to the value of the thing, which is at P nas plus I plus one. So when that's zero, add one will take us to the B thing. Now that's a zero thing, that's the one thing. Oh, missed out my equal symbols. And now, now that we've done that, we can now set this equal to the temporary value. Remember, we stored that in temp. We put John 79,000. No, we didn't. No, yeah, we set that to Paul 129,000. So I'll just put this over here. Temp equals John 79,000. Then we're going to set this equal to the second value. So this is going to get set to pool 129,000. And now we've got this temp value which we're going to stick into here. So that gets set to temp. So that's going to become John 79,000. Hopefully that all made a bit of sense. Let's just write the code for that then. The value of the thing at the second value is oh, it's now set to the thing that I held in the temp variable, Remember, which is a structure of type name and cell. Hopefully that all made sense. Oh, and we are going to swap again. So we're going to keep, let's end this if condition. Oh, what have I broken now? Broken something. Broken, so what have I broken now? Let's have a look. Size of array, oh. Size of array. There we are. Um, again, I'm not going to spend too long explaining bubble sort algorithms, but hopefully you kind of got to what was going on there. Hopefully it works. Hopefully I've explained the right thing. So yeah, we set that again to, to true. We, we go through the rest of the for loop, looking for the pairs that need swapping. First time round, um, well, 79,000 will just keep moving down because it will swap with 99,000 and then 79,000 will then swap with 89,000. But that doesn't necessarily mean the thing's in the right order. It, we'll have to go around again just to make sure. So set the Boolean to true. Come to the while loop, is that true? Yes it is. Do it all over again. And then keep going until you never get this con this being set because this con these this condition never fires. So let's give that a run, see if it works. It would succeed. <laughs> that surprised me, I didn't think it would. And there we are. So now we've got Paul 129,000, George 99,000, Ringo 79,000, John 79,000, he's gone down. What we could actually do, I suppose, is print it out every time, couldn't we? Um, let's do that. I've not done this. Let's, let's, let's see if I can try this. Um, let's print it out every time we do a change. Let's print it out. So it's going to be PNAS and size of array. Should work.
Give it a go, I might get hundreds of these. Well, not hundreds, but... So you can see... Swapped Paul and John. Then we swapped George and John. And then we swapped Ringo and John. And then the next time round, nothing needed swapping. Let's just change these around a bit just to see if that's working. Let's make that uh, 89,000, 99,000. See what we get this time. I think we should get a few more, shouldn't we? Yeah. So we've swapped John all the way down. Swapped that to that. Swap to that. Then we swap to that. Then we swap to that. Then we had to run it again because we had to get 99,000 above 89,000. That should be the end. Yes, and after processing. There we are. We're done. I think that that is quite enough of perhaps the world's worst ever bubble sort algorithm. But hopefully you uh, you kind of got the idea of using pointers to whiz through arrays and do lots of clever things. See you next time.